Here we go. All right, get untangled here. Hi everybody, it's Susan from Sunrise Quilt Studio and today I am doing some hand embroidery on my Sew By Row quilt. Um, I have been doing some projects around the house and one of them has been decluttering and I actually started decluttering months ago um, just a little bit at a time but recently it's become a little bit more urgent and um, while I was going through all my quilting supplies I realized I had a lot of unfinished projects that I really needed to complete and one of them is this sew by row quilt now this one became an unfinished project um, partly because of shipping problems with the company which uh, a lot of companies are, are dealing with slow shipping and um, not being able to get their materials in and it's not a fault their fault is just the way the world is right now and um, I have all the blocks completed and I have them sewed into rows um, but this quilt needs some hand embroidery work on some of the blocks like these are tomato pin cushions so here are the pins that are sticking out and you know they have a template where you can trace the lines on for your all the embroidery work so I have I had already done that but I hadn't done any any of the embroidery work and um, so I'm starting on that today and I'm using DMC floss and for the pins and for the sewing machine where you do the um, needle bar I'm using 451 and then for the irons I am matching the let's see if I can get that in there I'm matching the floss to the um, plug and um, so I have this is 502 DMC um, 312 321 and 721 so um, the 321 will be used on on two different irons uh, one is all red the other is red and pink and but the plugs are both red so I'm going to use that um, so I've done just got started did one tomato um, this is a pretty thick needle and I'm finding it difficult to get it through this fabric so I'm going to switch to a thinner needle and uh, see if that'll work a little bit better so I have this jumbo value pack by Allery um, this was my mother-in-law so I don't know how old this is it doesn't look old but um, let me see what we've got here we've got darners embroidery betweens and sharps and these look like looks like they're all mixed in together because these betweens well there's some long betweens so let's do these would be the darners these would be the embroidery ones so let's see but the eyes of these needles are so small um, that's why I was using this one because the eye is larger but let me see if there's one a little bit thinner And I do not have my uh, magnifying glass down here with me. When I am doing um, cross stitch, I use a magnifying glass. 
one that hangs around your neck. So let me see if I can thread this. I also use a thread conditioner, which I do not have down here with me. And I did just get recently get new glasses, but I think from between the time I had my eye exam and the time I got my glasses prescriptions filled, I think my uh, close-up vision has changed. And um, they don't seem to really help a whole lot. There we go. Okay, so let's see. It's still kind of a thick needle, but let's see. I just don't want to have to fight this the whole time I'm sewing. And, I, of course, we have all of the um, seams. There's just a ton of seams back here. And, of course, that's always difficult to get through. So I'm just doing a stem stitch here, and I need to tie a knot. I was just doing some cross stitch this morning, so I'm not used to tying the knots in the embroidery floss. But I need to do that on this one. So let's see if I can keep in camera sight here. And I'm just going to chat a little bit while I'm doing this. So this is a different type of a video than what I normally put out. But I wanted, did want to update you on some things because... Um, things have changed a little bit in uh, my life and uh, let's see if I can get this through here so I wanted to talk to you a little bit about that and see if I can get that needle through all that fabric Let's try this. Okay. Um, one thing is, let me, let me adjust the camera. Maybe we can get a little bit better view for you here. And I'm going to go back down here to end, see if I can get closer to the leaf. Okay. Now I normally use a thimble too, and my thimble my hand sewing kit um i've kind of lost track of it. i'm not sure what i did with it i was sewing on a binding the other day so maybe i uh, left it up in my office i was in my office watching youtube videos on my computer when i was binding so i might have left it up there okay this is kind of a rough start here but Okay, so with a stem stitch, I'm going to go about a quarter inch away, or about an eighth of an inch away from where I exited, and then go try and get right in that same hole. And just pull, and then go back another about an eighth of an inch, or sixteenth of an inch. I really can't tell. I'm still adjusting to my glasses. They are um, progressives progressive lenses which I have worn for oh, 20 years or more but for some reason I am having a really hard time adjusting to this new pair of glasses so I just am suspecting the prescriptions not right okay see it's a lot easier once I get way away from all those seams Okay, so things about the change, things that are changing. Um, I have had been, we live in a split level house and that is very common in this city. Uh, I live in Jefferson City, Missouri and, and that's majority of the houses are split levels or split foyers, which was, um, not a problem when we first moved in here but um, ever since 
I was on chemotherapy four years ago, I've been struggling with the stairs. And um, I'd had, I think I had bursitis in my hip. And that cleared up. But I'm still struggling. And um, I don't know if I've just lost that much muscle mass or bone mass. Or I also have scoliosis and that is, um, that does not improve, that just continues to get worse as you age. Um, and that also causes issues um, with strength in my legs. So we've known for about four years that we were gonna have to move eventually into a house that was more manageable for me, one that I didn't have to go up and down stairs for um, everything. And it's like everything on our house is on a different level. Our, uh, our kitchen, dining room, and living room are all on one level. But the bathroom, you either have to go upstairs or downstairs to get to the bathroom. Our bedrooms are on different levels, like my daughter's is on a different level than ours. So, And then the quilting machine is down in the basement so I'm going up and down stairs constantly um, doing laundry carrying baskets up and down stairs and um, just daily things my computer is um, in a spare bedroom uh, with my art supplies so where I paint and something got the dogs going. Let's see if they will come down here in a minute. Okay. Um, this one, the pins are really crooked, so. But I'm going to leave that. Now you could just do a straight stitch here if you wanted. You don't have to do a stem stitch. They never really say what kind of stitch to do here. So I'm just kind of making this up. So anyway, um, we've been looking for a, another house and my husband's a farm boy and he's been wanting to get back out in the country. And we do own some property um, on the family farm, but um, you know, my doctors are up here and our daughter has special needs and we have a support system up here and we just don't think that moving is uh, going to be good for her so we're going to stay in this area so we put our property on the farm for sale and um, we bought some property about 20 minutes away so it's close and then um, we're gonna have to build a house on it. So in order to afford to build the house, we've gotta get that property sold, plus we need to sell this house. So um, all of the projects that we had decided we needed to get done that we had put on hold while I was sick um, have now become urgent. We've got to get those done. And we've got them all done except for one. And we did have a contractor come out yesterday and he looked at the project and gave us some ideas on how we can handle it ourselves and uh, you know he can do it himself he said but it costs twice as much money as what we could do it ourselves so I guess we're going to do it ourselves I'm not sure where we're going to get the time to do it um, but once that's done then we'll put the house on the market so all of this decluttering I've been doing all winter long has now gone uh, to the top of the list of things I need to do. So I took a week off work and um, I have been decluttering. And it's coming along but it is um, it's kind of slow and um, basically I have way too many hobbies <laughs> and all hobbies have supplies and materials and equipment that go with them and so I've got those all kind of whittled down um, 
I've got one set that I think I'm going to see if a friend of mine will take and that is um, some scrapbooking supplies because I don't scrapbook much anymore and uh, see if she'll want those and I had already uh, been doing a, pretty much a yearly decluttering of my fabric stash so that was already done so it really wasn't too bad but I did need a week to start getting some things packed up like my books and um, some things in my kitchen um, my oldest daughter is moving back to North America and with shipping being delayed for you know retailers it's it's even slower for people who are moving so uh, when she moved first time when she moved overseas uh, it took a month to get her household goods to her new location well now they're telling her about two to two and a half months so she needs some she needs some items she's already ordered some furniture to be delivered to her new place her new apartment um, but things like uh, dishes and cook cookware that kind of thing she needs so uh, I went through my stuff and set aside some things for her and um, so she'll be it'll be a little bit before she's here she has hasn't uh, shipped out yet um, but she will be she will be back in the area in about two weeks two or three weeks so but she won't have time to she doesn't have the time off to spend with us she's gonna she has to start her new job right away so um, she's gonna have enough time to stop by the house say hi pack things up into her car and then um, head off so and she'll be about two hours away from us so it's a lot closer than 4,000 miles so well uh, we're all happy about that And so as far as the channel here, uh, I'm gonna continue to do this. Um, right now, I'm working on my UFOs. I'm trying to get them done. And I will go back to uh, doing uh, block videos because I know the majority of you like those and I will continue doing that. Um, I'm just needing to kind of get past this um, declutter stage in fact I think that would probably be the easiest thing for me to do and keep the channel going um, while we're in this transition so um, I will get back to that um, anything else that you all are interested in let me know but I will probably put up some um, finishing videos quilting videos um, because as I was going through all of my sewing stuff, my quilting stuff, I realized I had several projects that I needed to um, complete. They're like this one, they're in a stage I need to finish the top and then quilt it. I've got a couple tops that are ready to be quilted and I need to get them done because I'm gonna be without my long arm for a while. Um, because when we sell this house, uh, we'll be renting for a while until the house is built and so things are going to have to go into storage and um, the long arm is either going to ha haven't fully decided what to do about that yet it's either going to have to go into storage for a long term or I'm going to sell it and then just buy a another one when uh, we get the house settled I haven't decided yet or maybe even go a different route and uh, just hire out the quilting. I haven't decided yet. I, 
kind of hate giving up my long arm. I've had it for 20 years now and it's a really good machine and you know I don't have any mechanical problems with it at all. Um, but then it is also um, another thing that wears on my back while I'm quilting that that's hard on my back so don't know yet I haven't decided it's a it's a big decision so um, and then selling it is also a, a big big job and I've heard all kinds of nightmare stories about people trying to sell their long arms and getting scammed and uh, uh, I don't know but anyway, I know I'm going to be without it for a while, so I would like to get all of these tops done. And um, then I don't have to worry about them. And my quilting skills on my, on my domestic machine aren't that great, so um, I'm not sure I'm ready to try and tackle that. Tie a knot here. These little tomatoes, there are so many of them. Okay, one, two, three, four, five. I've done five. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. There's eleven all together, so I'm almost halfway done with these. And then I have to sew buttons on, but those buttons can be sewn on after it's quilted. Um, which it'll be harder to sew them on after they're quilted, but it'll be easier to quilt it and then put the buttons on. So I may just, on this one, I may just wait and uh, put the buttons on afterwards. Okay, so this Sew by Row was a project from Fat Quarter Shop last year. And, um, you know, they got delayed because of shipping issues. Um, but I think it was in February we got pretty much everything in. But I was doing other things and just didn't get back to this. So I finally got... Um, all the blocks sewn and sewn into uh, into rows and then I, now I've got to sew the rows together and this morning I did cut all the fabric for the sashing and the borders and there are a lot of borders on this quilt and I borders are my least favorite thing to do I don't like sewing on borders that's why I usually just limit my own projects to two borders I don't like to do more than that and this one I think has Four. There's three or four. And the fabric that they sent for one of the borders, um, it said to cut seven strips with the fabric, and there was only enough fabric there to cut five strips. So I don't even know if I have enough for all of the borders. So I'll have to see about that. I'll have to see how that works. So it was a wide fabric. Uh, I think it was probably a backing fabric that they were using. And so the width of the fabric was very wide. So there may be enough. Well, I'll, but I will find out. Let's see. Okay. So here's what the tomatoes look like so far with the little pins on there. So I've got five of those done. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six of them done. So I only have four more to go. No, I have five more to go. So I still have five more to go. I, I can't count today. But anyway, there's that. Um, on these irons, here the cord does a couple of curls and comes around 
and then hits the plug and then you, you uh, embroider the prongs on the plug. So I have that to do. And then the sewing machines. I think there's only three sewing machines and you embroider the needle bar here. And I have this traced lightly with um, just a number two pencil. Uh, it's enough I can see it, but the embroidery floss should cover that up. So, and I'm just going to go up one side and down the other, just use a, a stem stitch on there. I'm not going to do a satin stitch or anything. I'm not going to put that much work into this. And the same with this, this will just be a stem stitch. So that is what I am working on right now. Um, so, um, anyway, um, this is where I'm at. Um, also, if you are interested in any more tutorials on um, electric quilt EQ8, let me know and um, I can do more videos on that. I could show you um, how to download uh, fabric scraps or fabric swatches from the manufacturers and put them in your uh, software and um, uh, walk you through a designing a, a quilt with sashing and that kind of thing. Um, I'm still, I'm not an expert at um, EQ8. It's still fairly new to me. I've only had it since uh, around Thanksgiving time, I think, sometime in November, or December. Uh, I bought that, so I've only had it seven, eight, maybe nine months, and uh, I'm mo I mostly design blocks on it. So blocks and, well, I do blocks and quilts, but I'm, I don't do anything really complex on it, but let me know what kind of videos you're interested in, and uh, I will work on those. So, hope you are all having a good day, and I hope you are all staying happy and healthy, and um, I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. For more quilting ideas, click on the video links, and to keep up with my latest projects, click on the subscribe button. I hope to see you again soon.